Turn your Android phone into a Nintendo GameCube or a Nintendo Wii. A few years ago, I would have told you to be cautious and that it required too much setup and was too complicated. But having played with it for a few months now, I've been surprised with the results, especially with mobile controllers like the Razer Kishi or the Backbone and the fact that the Xbox, PS4 and PS5 controllers now work flawlessly with your phones. I'm going to be making a different video to talk about those, but for this video, I'm going to be giving you the ultimate guide to setting up and playing GameCube and Nintendo Wii games on your Android phone. This video has taken over a month to make and I've covered everything you need. This video is broken down into distinct parts and everything will be timestamped in the description. So if you're here for a specific part, you can use the timestamps or you can check out my channel for the individual videos. All links needed will be in the description as well. Another thing to note is that, as I was editing in this video, Dolphin was updated on Google Play Store. But the only thing I can see that makes a huge difference is the UI has now gone from blue to black. So everything in this video is still relevant and if there are any huge developments in Dolphin on Android, I will make a video about it. With all of that out of the way, enjoy the video. Now before we begin, I hate doing this kind of thing so I'll be quick, but 99% of my viewers are not subscribed to the channel and I understand why. You get the information you need and you don't need me again. So I'm not going to ask you to subscribe, although it will help, but I am going to ask you to hit the like button if you find the information useful. Sorry to be that guy. Let's get back to the tutorial. So let's take a look at which version of Dolphin is right for you because like I said before, every phone is different and games are going to run differently on every device. There isn't a one size fits all like there is if you just own a console. Performance is going to vary and the mileage you get is going to depend on the power and CPU slash GPU in your phone. On the Dolphin website, they recommend having a Snapdragon 700 or newer CPU with GPU capable of OpenGL ES 3.0 or higher and Vulkan 1.1 is definitely recommended. To find out about your phone's capabilities, I highly recommend just Googling your phone and the CPU with these terms just to see what it is capable of. A phone with at least two big cores is desired. This is certainly going to be a test it out kind of experience. Try one version and if you have trouble, try out a different version. The first place I'd go to is the Google Play Store. That's where the most up-to-date beta version is likely going to be. It's the official version of Dolphin and the most stable on Android. You're going to get the best accuracy and official fixes by the Dolphin development team. It's also going to benefit from self-updates and when you update, you're not going to risk losing any data or have to create a backup every time that you need to update the APK. The only downside is that if there's any new breakthroughs that happen that allow for better emulation, then you're going to have to wait a few months for them to be implemented into the beta release and sometimes this version can be a few weeks or months behind what's available on the website. If you've watched all my settings videos and you've tried all my fixes and you're still having issues with Dolphin you can then try the developmental builds on the official Dolphin website. In the past I've used these versions of Dolphin because they've had some features that were unavailable in the beta release on Google Play and certain games have run better on them but for now I'm happy with the Google Play Store version. These builds are updated two to three times a day and sometimes can be the key to getting better performance. Simply go to the website in the description and try a few of these out and see if it helps with your issue, especially one of the ones that has Android in the description. These versions are at the forefront of Dolphin development, but they have significantly less testing and have a bigger risk involved. They also don't auto-update, which means you have to download and reinstall a new version every time, which can be a lengthy process and requires you to back up all your data and then re-ingest it. And if you forget to do that, you then run the risk of losing all your progress. If you've downloaded the developmental build and you're still having issues with performance after trying that, then there's still one glimmer of hope, Android forks. And though these aren't used to eat your phone, these are unofficial builds that focus on performance on Android. They sacrifice a lot of stability and accuracy for getting games running. It's kind of a last chance saloon, but it's worth it if you're having trouble with the official build. I'll leave links in the description for these builds and you can try them for yourself. The one I recommend is MMJR2 by Lumins as it's the only one that's actively still in development. But to download it, you go to the GitHub page, find the latest release, download the APK and install it to your phone. It has a lot of familiar settings and menus and it's basically the same as the official build, so it's very familiar in that sense. 
I've been playing Skyward Sword on it for a few days and while the frame rate is more stable, there's been a few glitches here and there that weren't present on the official version. So that's everything you need to know about the different versions of Dolphin on Android. There's other forks you can check out, but there hasn't been many updates on them for quite some time now. So I'm not going to go deep into those. The beauty of these forks is that you can have both installed on your phone. So if one game runs better on MMJR2, then you can use that and you can also have the original Dolphin installed for other games if that's what you want to do. So let's install Dolphin on your Android phone. Start by going to the Google Play Store, type in Dolphin Emulator, then click Install. And when that's installed, just open the app. Enable usage statistics reporting. You can decide on this one yourself. And now we just need to add our games and ROMs. So press the plus sign in the bottom right corner. Find the folder that has your ROMs in. So mine's in ROMs, GameCube and click use this folder. You can see all my ISOs are there. Click allow. And that will begin importing all the games and ROMs from that folder. And whenever you drop a game in that folder, it will automatically put it in the emulator. I can see it is filling up with all my GameCube games. So we have three folders in the top left. We have GameCube in the middle. You tap that folder, that'll be all the Wii games. And then the folder icon here is all of the classic game wads and things like that. So I've got some N64 and Super Nintendo games here. We've got GameCube, Wii, Classic. Now you can pretty much just play games in the default settings like this now, but there are a few settings that I like to configure myself as well, and I'd like to go through them with you now. So press the settings cog, go to config, general. What I like to do is I like to enable cheats because I use gecko codes and action replay codes every now and again. I click allow mismatch region settings and change discs automatically. So if I'm playing a game like Metal Gear Solid Twin Snakes that has two discs, when it needs the second disc, it will automatically put that on and there'll be no pause in my gameplay. I also changed the fallback region to NTSCU because I'll be playing the United States versions of the games. If you mainly play games from Europe, then you're going to want to change that to the PAL version. That's it for general. Then we go to interface and I just make sure that screen orientation during emulation is set to landscape because I play most of my games in landscape. If you're playing games in portrait mode, then you're going to want to change it to portrait mode, but I much prefer the landscape mode. And if you don't see your game covers and box art automatically, then just check that download game covers from gametdb.com is ticked as well. That way all your games will look pretty on the interface. That's it from the config settings. Now we go to the graphic settings and then video backend. I always like to start in Vulkan just to check to see if it runs well in Vulkan. If it doesn't, then change it to OpenGL. It will entirely depend on your phone. Like I said, all phones react differently to this emulation and you're just going to have to find out which backend is best for your GPU. For example, I play Super Mario Galaxy 2 and Twilight Princess in OpenGL and I play Skyward Sword and Super Mario Sunshine in Vulcan. It really does depend on the game and the phone. I like to click show FPS because I like to look at that type of stuff because I am an absolute nerd. And it also gives you a better sense of how the games are running. Shader compilation by default is set to specialized and that's going to give you the best performance. But what I like is hybrid Uber shaders. Hybrid Uber shaders will help with stuttering and things like that during shader compilation and they'll have a minimal performance impact, but the results do depend on your video driver and what it is that is running your phone. So if you're having issues, I'd highly recommend that you change it back to specialized, but test out hybrid Uber shaders because it's a much better experience if you can get it running with it. I also click compile shaders before starting because this will get all the shaders that are already in your system together before the game starts, which will eliminate a lot of the stuttering, but it will take a bit of time for the games to load up as well. Sometimes it can take up to two to three minutes to compile all those shaders together. But the more you play the game, the more shaders that it'll compile for you before the game starts, and then the longer it will take for the game to launch, but the game will run a lot smoother. Aspect ratio, I like to have this on stretch to window, so it fills out my entire phone, but if you want a classic experience, then you can force 16 by 9 that'll give you the full widescreen experience, or you can just click auto, but games that do have a 4x3 aspect ratio, you'll be left with black bars at the side of your screen. And a lot of GameCube games, if you're playing GameCube games or Nintendo 64 games or classic games, a lot of them are going to play with 4x3, 
and some do have widescreen settings in the settings of the game itself as well. I like stretch to window because I like to have the game fill out the entire screen. I'm not too fussed about that. In the enhancements section, we have the internal resolution. Now this, I always set to one by native, but on a game by game basis. So some games on GameCube, you can run at 1080p, but you can set these settings for individual games. And I'll show you how to do that in a second, but always keep it at one by native because Nintendo Wii games are definitely not gonna run at 1080p. So there's no point in even trying. The same goes for all of these other effects like full scene anti-aliasing and anisotropic filtering. A lot of these are going to make the games look a lot better, but it may affect the performance. So what I like to do is I like to start the game, see how it runs, if it runs well, or add a couple of these in, check the performance, and then I'll come back and make a few alterations individually to the game. Like I said, I'm going to show you how to do that in a second. So we'll go back. And the GameCube input and the Wii input section is where you will go when you want to set up a controller. But we're getting a bit ahead of ourselves here. So once we've got our overall general settings set up, now it's time to look at individual games and how you will set up settings for individual games. So let's say, for example, you've played Super Mario Sunshine and you know that it runs extremely well in the default settings and you want to test out a couple of things. So what you do is you hold down on the game itself. So Super Mario Sunshine, I'll hold down. And it will bring up this menu here, which will show you the details. You can start it with patches, set it as the default ISO that plays automatically, or edit game settings, edit cheats, or clean clear the game settings as well. So if we click edit game settings, this will bring up a menu that will show you individual game settings. So you have the config and the graphic settings, and also you can set up individual controls for the game as well if you're using a controller. So if I click the graphic settings, it'll now bring up video backend, show FPS, all the shader compilations and stuff like that from before. And this is where we set it individually just for this game. So if I go to enhancements, go to internal resolution, and then I'll click three times native, that'll put it into 1080p. And then we'll put some anti-aliasing on as well. I'll go with two times anti-aliasing, and I'll go with two times anisotropic filtering just to see how that affects the game. Now, if we go back and we go back again, and then we can launch Super Mario Galaxy in 1080p and see how that runs. And there is Super Mario Sunshine running in 1080p. We're getting 25 frames per second here. So this is Super Mario Sunshine. I've loaded it up 1080p with a couple of extra things on and it's running at 15 frames per second. So that is not very good and we want to change a couple of settings. So what you do is you press the Android back button and that'll bring up this little menu here which means we can change a couple of things while the game is playing just to fine tune our experience it really is a fantastic addition to this it's something that i do a lot on the pc but i've never been able to do on android and i'm really glad that this is in the emulator itself so press the settings it'll bring up a settings menu and then i go to graphic settings now we can't change the video back end which i've set to vulcan so i can't check if opengl runs better i'd have to come out of the game to check that but we can go to the enhancement section and we can change the internal resolution. So it's currently at three times native 1080p. So let's change that down to two times native. See if that works 720p. Let's take off anti-aliasing and let's take off an isotropic filtering that we put up earlier. We can press back, 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 and we'll go back into the emulator. And there we're now getting a smooth 30 frames per second. So maybe it was the anisotropic filtering. So if I go back again, Press the settings and it'll bring up the settings menu. We go to graphic settings and I'll go to enhancements and let's just try internal resolution 1080p. Let's change it back to three times 1080p. Go back and back again. And nope, 1080p, we're getting 25, 23 frames per second there, which isn't bad, but we know we can get 30 at 720 and it's still looking good. So I'll just go back into the graphic settings, go into enhancements, go to internal resolution. And I'll just change that back to 720p because that's the one that I think is running fine. I can also mess around with a lot of other things here. So if I want to go back, I can go to the hacks and I can check out to see if skip EFB access from CPU. That sometimes makes games run faster on PC. So I'm going to try it again on here and then store EFB copies to texture only. I'll try that and we'll see what that does to the game. So I'll go back. And it is literally a game of just fine tuning that experience. So you get 30 frames per second or 60, depending on what game it is that you're playing. 
but that seems to be running fine. Now, we can also go to the control sections and click overlay controls. This is where we can mess around with what controls are on the screen. So, so let's say you have a controller plugged in, you click toggle controls, toggle all, and then none of the controls are on the screen. So you can play happily with your controller, but I don't have a controller plugged in right now. I'm gonna get to that, toggle them all back on. So if we go to overlay controls as well, we can click adjust controls so you can adjust the opacity that the controls are on the screen. So let's change that down to about 20% and the scale as well. So say if you want them much bigger on the screen, you can change them to 200% or if you want them just to be a little bit smaller, but I got fat thumbs, so I need them to be a little bit bigger. But as you can see now, the controls on the screen, they're just a barely viewable and they're a lot smaller than they were before. So if we go back again, go into the overlay controls, adjust controls. I'm going to turn the opacity up and because i got fat thumbs, I'm going to make them a little bit bigger as well. Also in the overlay controls, you can edit where the controls are on the screen. So if you want your thumbstick to be over here for some reason, you can move the thumbstick around. And then when you're done, you can move the Z button, move all of these around to wherever you want to put them. So that's absolutely bonkers there. And when you're finished, click done. And you can turn the rumble off and on by clicking overlay control. So you can see it's off. We'll turn that back on. And then the final thing, if you've messed it up too much like I have there, you can just reset the overlay and it will put everything back to where it was before. To get out of the game, you press back and you go to exit emulation. And then, just to make sure, I'm going to hold down on Super Mario Much Sunshine, click Edit Game Settings, go to the Graphic Settings, and just make sure that those settings are saved that I enjoyed. So, nope, 2 times 720p. We turn that off, we turn that off as well. So, once you're finished with the game, just go into the settings and make all those changes to make sure that they then become the default settings. So, all of that was turned on. And it ran smooth as butter. And there we go, saved settings for G for Super Mario Sunshine. So that's GameCube games and the GameCube controller. As far as Nintendo Wii games go, I do not recommend playing any of these without the controller, especially games that use a lot of motion controls and things like that. You're not going to be playing Skyward Sword or Super Mario Galaxy just using the touchscreen controls. You're probably going to be able to play games like Kirby's Epic Yarn or Mario Kart using the on-screen controls. So with Mario Kart, you're probably going to need the classic controller. So I'll show you how to do that now. Same with Kirby's Epic Yarn. So if I open Mario Kart and then I press back, bring up this menu here and then click overlay controls. This is where on the Wii side, we can choose the controller that we use. I'm going to choose the controller. Now this is set to Wii Remote and Nunchuck, but I'm you can use a GameCube controller, which is perfect as well, or a classic controller, which some games are perfect with a classic controller. So this is where you will change what type of controller will be on the screen. I'm going to choose classic controller just to show you that. And then back on the overlay controls as well, we can check motion controls. And this is where you can use the device sensors to control the game. So first, let's look at the classic controller. So there is the classic controller on the screen. So if I wanted to use motion controls, I go back to overlay controls, click choose controller, and then I'd go with horizontal Wii remote, click OK. So now in theory, as I move my phone to the left and right, and honestly, this isn't a great experience. I don't recommend it, but I'm tilting my phone to the left and to the right. And it is moving the cart at the same time. But this is why I recommend using the Classic Controller or the GameCube Controller for games like this. Especially if you're using touchscreen. If you're using controller, it's a completely different experience. So let's say you want to play Super Mario Galaxy 2 anyway. The first thing you're going to want to do is actually change the back end because Super Mario Galaxy 2 doesn't work on Vulcan. Well, it doesn't work on my phone. So I'm going to hold down and press Super Mario Galaxy 2, go to edit game settings, go to graphic settings and change the video backend from both Vulcan to OpenGL because I know that works. 
Again, I'm going to go to Enhancements and just make sure that the internal resolution is set to one times native because there's no way this game is running in 1080p. And then I will switch to Super Mario Galaxy and let's have a look. We'll do Galaxy 2. So now it says we need to connect a nunchuck to the player one remote. So if we press back, go to overlay controls and then choose controller, change it to Wiimote and nunchuck and click OK and it should work. Press A and B at the same time. And there we go. So as you can see, there is no pointer on my screen. So if I go press back, go to the settings, click overlay controls, click motion controls, and then change use device centers without pointer emulation. So I can use the touch screen. If you want to use your device centers for pointer emulation, click use device centers with pointer emulation. But I don't do that because it is it's quite difficult to find where the center is and you have to keep your phone in a certain position for the pointer to appear which you kind of have to do anyway, but you'll see in a second. So if we go back to the game and then I just have to find, if I put my phone where the center is, so hear that little rumble. There's my, there it is, it's appeared here. So I've got the pointer to appear, so I can now use the touchscreen control. That's A, there we go. And that's my, my touchscreen for Mario now the problem is here if I move it too far like this it goes away and the point has disappeared so I have to then bring the pointer back at this point here so let's use the touchscreen to start that so Super Mario Galaxy is actually running at 60 frames per second which is very good I can use the touchscreens and then I can use the touch to move this around which isn't going to be very good when it comes to messing around with Yoshi later on. So it's definitely a playable experience and one of the great things is we have shake to spin. If I shake my phone, it will spin. Shake, 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 shake to spin. And if I need the pointer, I have to have my phone in a certain position where the pointer appears on the screen and I can use the touchscreen controls once that's active. But if I move my phone like this away, then the the point has disappeared and I can't control it anymore. I have to have my phone in a certain position. It is just very uncomfortable. But if you want to play Super Mario Galaxy like this, then by all means, give it a go. But I highly recommend using a controller instead. And as far as the classic games go, you're going to need a classic controller as well for those. So let's say we're going to play Legend of Zelda A Link to the Past. I'm going to click on that. And then I'm going to click back. Then click overlay controls, find choose controller and change it to the classic controller. Click OK. And there we go. We have our classic controller on our screen. Ready to play Legend of Zelda, a link to the past on Dolphin Emulator. Again, to get out, back, exit emulation. So let's take a look at how to set up a controller for GameCube games, which is the simplest controller you can set up on Dolphin because there's no motion controls, there's no gimmicks, there's no nunchucks, there's nothing like that to deal with. It really is as simple. The GameCube controller will always stay the same. Now, I'm going to be using a Razer Kishi, but this can work for an Xbox controller or a PlayStation 4 controller or even a PlayStation 5 controller. So what we do is we click the settings cog in the top right corner. And then we click GameCube Input. And this will bring up four controller port options, meaning that you can have up to four controllers emulated at one time, which is great if you want to play multiplayer games, but I doubt you'll want to play them on a phone anyway. But if you've got a big tablet, maybe that's something that you want to do, or you've got one of those Android game boxes. So I'm going to click GameCube Controller 1, and then we're going to click Emulate it, because we're going to want to put our controller into controller port 1. So here we have all our buttons, A, B, X, Y, Z, and start. And we have the control stick, the C stick, the D-pad, and rumble. Like I say, it's really easy and simple process. So we're going to start with, we press the button we want to bind. So we're going to do A, bind that to A, and then B, X, Y. And then for Z, I usually use the... RB button or R1 as it's called on the Razer Kishi and the PlayStation 2 and start. Let's get that to start. The control stick is the left analog stick. Up, down, down, left, right. And then the C stick, up, down, 
left, right, and then the back triggers are the two back triggers here. And what's great about the Android version is that it automatically has the analog triggers pre-programmed in so you don't have to mess around with anything like that like you do on the PC version. And then the classic D-pad, up, down on the D-pad, left, right. And then we just press back, back, back. And now you're ready to go to play GameCube games on your Android phone using your controller. Now, when you launch the game, you're going to see these controls, the touchscreen controls are still on the screen. To get rid of them, you press the back button again to bring up this menu, then press overlay controls. And when it says toggle controls, press that and click toggle all, and all the controls will disappear. And now as you can see, you've got pretty much APSP setup. And this is one of the reasons why I like the Razer Kishi is because it basically means I can hold it like it is a PSP or a PS Vita or Nintendo Switch or something like that. With games like Legend of Zelda Twilight Princess, you can see in the top right corner here, they have the buttons on the screen. And sometimes my brain works in a way that like X is on the right side. So I'll press B for X and I'll press X for B or something like that. And you want to change it specifically just for this game so that the X button is on this side. And I'll show you how to do that now. It's just a little thing that I do. So I'm going to exit the emulation. I'm going to hold down on Legend of Zelda Twilight Princess. Click Edit Game Settings. Go to GameCube Input. Click Controller 1. Emulate it. And then I'll just make my own specific one for that. So A is A. B is X. X is B. And Y is Y. And the rest I'll set up as normal. So this way, when I'm playing the game... And I see in the top right corner that there is an item on this side. I will play it on this side. So that's just something you can do if you want to make specific controller setups for specific games. You know, that is set up for Legend of Zelda Twilight Sword. Let's say you want to play a Nintendo Wii game with a GameCube controller. Because some Nintendo Wii games do allow you the use of GameCube controllers like Kirby's Epic Yarn and Mario Kart Wii. So let's open Mario Kart Wii. And then we'll press the back button to bring up this lovely menu here. And then we'll go to overlay controls, click choose controller, and we will choose the GameCube controller and click OK. And now we can play the game as if we are playing it on a GameCube controller, which is fantastic. So let's take a look at setting up our controller in the Wiimote sideways position commonly used in 2D platformers like Super Mario Bros Wii and Kirby's Epic Yarn. This is one of the easiest controllers to set on in Dolphin as there's not much motion controls. There's a few with Super Mario Bros Wii but they're not really that difficult because you don't really use the IR receiver and you don't really use swing or anything like that. Games like Skyward Sword and Super Mario Galaxy that use the extension and the motion plus are a lot more difficult to set up. This is a relatively easy process and I'm going to show you how to do it. So there are two ways to get to the menu to set up the controls. The first one is to just press the settings cog, go to Wii Input, go to Wii Remote, and then click Emulate it, and it'll bring up the Wii Remote 1. But because the Wii Remote has so many different extensions, so many different ways to play the game, you're going to want to set it up for the individual game itself. So if we press the back button and go back to our hub, you can see I've got many different games that have many different controller inputs and I'm going to want to set them up individually for each one so that when I launch the game I don't have to go back into the settings and change all the controls every time. So if I hold down on Super Mario Bros Wii it'll bring up this menu and then I can just click the section that says edit game settings and now I go to the Wii input section. It has GameCube input there but you cannot play this game with a GameCube controller because you do need some motion controls as well. So if we click Wii Remote 1 and then click emulate it. Obviously, the best way would be to use a real Wiimote. But as I've left all my Wiimotes in the UK, I'm going to be using the Razer Kishi. And this also works on an Xbox controller, PlayStation 4 controller, and PlayStation 5 controller as well. So extension, we're going to set that to none. Now, these buttons are all going to depend on how you play Super Mario Bros. Wii or how you play your 2D platformers. For jump button, I always use A to jump. And then for sprint or anything like that, I use X. And the any, any XX buttons, I apply to B and Y. So on Super Mario Bros. Wii, jump is 2. So for this, whatever you use as your jump button, set to 2. I'm going to set A. I'm going to set A for mine. And then for the sprint button, which is 1, I'm going to set 
X. Now, if you're used to playing Super Mario Bros with the B, I know some people do hold B for sprint, but for some reason, X just feels more natural to me to hold and sprint. Then for the A button, I'm going to set that to Y because that's not really used that much. It's just used in the menus. And the B, which is the back button, another button that isn't used that much in the game, I'm going to set that to B as well. The minus, I'm going to set to select, plus start. And again, the home button, it just brings you to the Wii Home menu. You're not going to need it. And the IR receiver, we're not going to need IR or anything like that as well. One motion control we're going to need to set up is the tilt function, because on Super Mario Bros. Wii, there are some levels where you need to tilt the Wiimote left and right, holding it in your hand, which... Because it's sideways and it's not the real way, it needs to be forwards and backwards, forwards and backwards. You can use the device motion sensors you have, so you can just tilt your phone backwards and forwards. So I like to set this up with buttons. So we're going to be tilting, we need to tilt left and right, but because of the way the Wiimote is, it's sideways, it becomes forwards and backwards. So we need to set this up with forwards is left, so I'm going to use L1 for forwards, and then backwards is right, so I'm going to use R1 for backwards. So forwards left backwards right so when we press l1 r1 it will simulate the tilting for the platforms and when we let go it simulates it going back to normal now shake is another one in games like super mario bros and kirby's epic yarn that you're going to need to use some games want you to shake your controller to perform a specific move like in super mario brothers when you shake your controller it then gives you a nice little spinny tilt or whirl or if you're using one of the power-ups, you're going to need to learn to shake as well. You can just shake your phone if you're using the device motion sensors. But like I said, I like to turn them off because I like to play my 2D platformers without throwing my phone or throwing my controller around the place. So X on shake, I set that to R2. Same with Y, same with Z. And that is just going to simulate me shaking the controllers whenever I press R2. So I can jump, slam R2, and it's going to simulate me shaking the controller. Now, the D-pad is where we get to another difficult process because the <laughs> Wiimote is on its side. Up is no longer up. Down is no longer down. Left isn't right. And this also is where you need to make a choice on whether you want to play on the D-pad of your controller or if you want to play on your analog stick. So if you want to play on your analog stick, set this to the analog stick, the left analog stick. If you want to play on your D-pad, set all of these controls to your D-pad. Up is left, down is right, left is down, right is up. So let's do that together very slowly because this took me a couple of tries to get right the first time I did it as well. So I press up on the game settings and then I press left on my D-pad or left on my analog stick if I'm using the analog stick. I press down on the control schemes and I press right on my D-pad or right on the analog stick. Then I press left in the game settings, which then becomes down on the D-pad or down on your analog stick. And that means right is up and up on the D-pad or up on the analog stick. Very, very confusing, but I haven't found the option on Android emulator to simulate just the Wiimote sideways. So it works on the PC. There is a button you can just press and that will simulate the Wiimote being sideways. I haven't found it on Android, and I don't know if it's here. If it is, it's deep, deep in the settings. And if anyone knows, please let me know down in the comment because it would make my life a lot easier when setting the controls for these games. Because like I said, I do each one individually for each game, and I have to have a piece of paper next to me. And if I lose that piece of paper, then... I've got to figure it all out again, going in and out of the game. And there we have it. We're all set up to go with new Super Mario Bros. Wii. So I'm going to play that. I'm going to show you how this works. So as you can see, we have our touchscreen controls on the screen and we want to get rid of them. So we press the back button. We go to overlay controls. We click toggle controls and we click toggle all and all the controls go away. And we have our PSP Nintendo Switch Vita experience that we want. Also, if you don't want to use the motion controls, you press overlay controls again. And then we go all the way down to the bit where it says motion controls and we put don't use device sensors. That way it won't use any of our device sensors. It will just use the buttons that we have assigned to the motion controls. But like I said, if you want to use the motion controls, you don't need to set these buttons and you can just sit there shaking your phone and tilting it backwards and forwards if you want to do it. It's entirely up to you. Whatever you assign the controls to is entirely up to you and whatever you feel is comfortable. These are just the ones that feel the most comfortable to me when I'm playing the game. So let's go into a level and I'll show you these controls working. So as we see, right, left, up, down, all work perfectly. And if I want to do a little shake, I press the R2 
and it does a little shake. Beautiful. But also, as you can see, the tilt function is working as well. If I press L1 and R1, it tilts. And that's everything you really need to simulate the Wiimote sideways position for 2D platformers. So let's take a look at setting up our controller for games like Super Mario Galaxy and Super Mario Galaxy 2 using the Wiimote Nunchuck configuration. Now, like I've said previously, with Nintendo Wii games, there are so many different controller configurations that you don't use these same controls for each game. For example, Kirby's Epic Yarn uses it in the Wii side modes configuration, and there's a link in the description to show you how to sort that out. And Skyward Sword uses the Wii Nunchuck configuration, but it has completely different controls to Super Mario Galaxy and Super Mario Galaxy 2. So there's no point going into the settings, going into Wii Import, going to Wii Remote 1 and emulating, and just setting up one control system for all the different games so what we do is we set up a control system for each individual game now before we get into the controls i'm just going to do a couple of things to help with getting the game launched because super mario galaxy 2 and super mario galaxy 1 do not run well with vulcan at this moment in time on dolphin emulator so we're going to go into edit game settings we're going to go into graphic settings i'm going to change the video back end to OpenGL because OpenGL actually works better for this game and it reiterates what i say with all my installs and setups is that none of these settings are going to be perfect for every game you're going to have to mess around and you have to figure out what works and what doesn't work i'm going to show you a couple of other settings that i use for super mario galaxy games to help them run better for example shader compilation mode i usually use hybrid uber shaders but this time i'm going to be using these specialized default settings now with super mario galaxy you're going to want all of your settings to be at the default settings except for compile shaders before starting because i like to have that to get rid of some of the stuttering so in enhancements, internal resolution, we keep it at one times native. There's no way we're getting 1080p on an Android phone. I haven't got the Snapdragon 8 Gen Plus, but I'm pretty sure that you're not going to get 1080p on a game like Super Mario Galaxy on that either. The next thing is in the hack section. We're going to keep the standard skip EFB access from CPU to its default of off. And as we scroll down, some of the other settings that I usually change, like store XFB copies to texture only, I'm going to keep that on. All of these settings need to be the default setting. And if you want to make sure of that, you hold down on the setting and it'll restore the setting to its default value. So if I turn skip EFB access from CPU on, and then I want to change it back to the default just to make sure it is the default setting, it'll clear it and set it to that. So that's the game setting sorted. Next, we're gonna check out how to do the controller itself. So in the settings menu for the game, so I'll just go back and show you that again. I'll hold Super Mario Galaxy 2, hold it down. I'll click edit game settings and I'll go to Wii Input. Wii Remote 1, emulated. Now we need to set up our controller. So we'll start with the extension because we need a nunchuck for this game. This game will not run without a nunchuck assigned to your Wiimote. And for the buttons on C, I usually have C, I just press in the left analog stick on my controller. I'm using the Razer Kishi, but the Xbox controller, the PlayStation 4, the PS5 controller, these all work with this method as well. And then for Z, I like to use the L2 button because it is the ground pound and I like to ground pound with the Z button. For the stick, this is the analog control. So I'm going to press up, up, down, left right on my left analog stick because this is the movement stick swing we do not need to swing and we do not need to tilt but we do need to shake our nunchuck every now and again and i set that to the y button so where it says x i press y where it says y i press y where it says z i press y now this will simulate shaking the nunchuck whenever i press the y button we go back and then we go to the button so a is the jump button i like to use a for the jump button so we're going to press a and then B is the back trigger on the Wiimote, which usually shoots Yoshi's tongue or stars. So I set that to the right trigger. We're going to be moving the analog stick to move the pointer on the screen. And it's much easier to press R2 instead of moving your hand over to B, X and Y. Because the second you let go of this analog stick, the pointer moves to the middle of the screen. One and two are not used in this game, so we do not use them. Minus, I set to select, and plus, I set to start, and we don't need the home button because we're not on a Nintendo Wii console. IR features, this is the IR receiver, so this is the pointer that's on the screen that's usually a star, or it's used for Yoshi's tongue. So we press up, up on the right analog stick, down, down on the right analog stick, left, left on the right analog stick, right, right on the right, right analog stick. Now, usually in the game, when you're playing the game and you're not moving the right analog stick, it will be in the center and the star will be in the center and it will be very annoying. And a lot of people do not like that. It is very, very 
not frustrating, but it is a mild inconvenience. You can hide the pointer by pressing the hide button here where it says hide and I assign that to X. Now, one of the downsides to this is you're gonna always have to have X held for the pointer to be missing from the game. So my logic here is I usually press X to sprint in Super Mario Brothers, so I use X here. So if you're usually pressing B to sprint in Super Mario Brothers, then you can set the hide button to B. So whenever I'm running around, I'm holding X down, I'm pressing A to jump, and the pointer is not on the screen. And whenever I am moving the pointer with the right analog stick, my logic is that I am not going to need it hidden, so I'm not going to be needing to press X down. That is the only way to do it as far as I know so far. I wish there was just a button where you press the button and it hides it, and you press the button and it comes back on like on the Nintendo Switch version, but that's just not the case on Dolphin Emulator. Swing, we do not need to swing our control in this game, so we're going to ignore those. This isn't Skyward Sword. Tilt, usually I would assign some buttons to tilt or would make a completely different set of controls for the tilt function because some of the levels in this game they do require you to tilt and use the gyroscope when you jump on a ball for example or if you do the gliding missions with the dinosaur but because we have motion sensors on our android device we can now use the motion sensors built into our android device and I'll show you how to do that when we get into the gameplay later you can turn the motion controls off and on whenever you need them and it is actually brilliant i managed to get through the levels that i usually cannot play without changing the controls in the settings and it's beautiful you're not going to be smashing world records with those motion controls but you are going to be able to get all the stars which is a positive for the shake i set the shake to the r1 button because i like to use r1 for shake so this simulates shaking just the Wiimote. If you want to shake the Wiimote and the nunchuck at the same time with this configuration, you press Y and X together. The D-pad, not really used that much in these games. It's mainly for camera stuff, but I set it to the standard D-pad anyway, just in case I do need to use it. And that's it. We're ready to go and get into the game. There's still a couple more things in the game that we need to do to make it a better experience. And we'll get into that now, but that's everything you need to set up the controller. Like I said, I'm using the Razer Kishi, but this works for the Xbox controller, PlayStation 4, and PlayStation 5 controller as well. So, let's start Super Mario Galaxy 2. And these controls work perfectly for Super Mario Galaxy as well, but Super Mario Galaxy is a bit more annoying because all of the menus you have to use the infrared pointer, and it can be a bit finicky and a bit annoying using the infrared pointer for some of the levels on that, because some of the levels heavily rely on it, whereas with Super Mario Galaxy 2, there is less reliance on it. You only really use it when using your Yoshi's tongue. So in the main menu here, one thing I like about Super Mario Galaxy is I can use the control stick to mess around with the menu. Something that you can't really do in Super Mario Galaxy 1, which is very annoying so you have to use the IR receiver. But really fast load up, 60 frames per second in the hub. Sometimes that will drop down to 50 or 45 a lot, but it's completely playable and it is still a fantastic experience. As you can see, the pointer here, the right analog stick, I'm using the right analog stick to move it around. You can use touchscreen if you want, but when you use the touchscreen, sometimes it does disable the right analog stick, so be careful of that. So you can use the touchscreen to touch around, but it's not really a great experience when playing the game with a controller. It is fantastic, however, when you're using touch controls. So, so let's say you started up the game and the controls are on the screen, the overlay controls, and you want to get rid of them because you're using a controller. If you press back on your Android phone, go to overlay controls, and then where it says toggle controls, click that, click toggle all, and all of the controls will disappear, and we get that console-like experience. Another thing we're going to want to do is in the overlay controls, maybe your star hasn't appeared, and that's because the motion sensors are active. So if we go to overlay controls and motion controls here, you can see I've got it set to don't use device sensors. And I said before that you're gonna need the motion device sensors for the gliding and things like that. But the problem is if you use device sensors and click okay, you can see the pointer has disappeared. And when I move the right analog stick, it doesn't, it doesn't move it and it doesn't appear. And that's because I have to lay the phone flat for it to appear because it's using the motion sensors as if it was a Wii mode. Even when I put motion controls and I set it to without pointer emulation, it still doesn't register it. So I use don't use device sensors up until I get to the part where I'm gliding. And I'll show you that in a second. Then I activate the motion sensors and then I complete the game and unactivate them anyway. Because I've got the shake and everything else that I need to play the game. 
mapped out to certain controls. So let's just check a few things while we're here and then I'll go into the motion controls and the tilt as well. So if I press and hold X, which I normally do to run around anyway, you can see that the pointer is missing from the screen and I can jump, run and play around. But if I need the pointer for Yoshi, so let's go get Yoshi. So I need the pointer for Yoshi, so I let go of X, I move to the right analog stick and then I can use B, the right trigger, to get up. Nope, completely missed and fluffed that. I'm going to have to do that again. Cut that. So I can now use the right analog stick to grab the flowers and grab things that I need to eat. And it works as it should. You can use the left trigger if you want. You can change it to the left trigger or the right trigger. I just prefer the right trigger because I'm naturally playing it as if it is kind of like an FPS shooter. But it is entirely up to you. And then as for shake, let's shake the Wiimote so we can do a little spin. Shake the Wiimote and then shake the nunchuck. Wiimote nunchuck together. As you can see, the pointer moves as well. Everything is working as it should. So let's say you've got yourself to Wild Glide Galaxy. You need to use the motion controls to complete this level. Now, usually in the past, I'd exit the game and I'd create a new controller profile that made sure that I could glide using L1 and R1 and I could move forward and backwards using R2 and L2. Then I'd finish the level, I'd come back out of the game and i create the controller profile that I had originally, especially on PC where I have a device with no motion sensors on it. So what we need to do here to activate the motion controls at this particular moment, we press back until we get the blue menu at the side, this lovely blue menu that I love so much. Go to overlay controls, motion controls, and then use device sensors without pointer emulation. Click OK. So this means that when we move the device around, it won't simulate moving the pointer as well. Even though the device does have to be laid flat for the pointer to be on the screen, really doesn't make sense. I hope they change that there. So that means that it is in the neutral position. If we had the pointer emulation on, the pointer will be moving around with us and the phone. So if I shake... It'll do the spinny attack, and now if I go to the glide guy, the little bird, I hate these levels so much. I'm so glad that there's not that many in this game. It's one of the reasons I don't play Super Mario Galaxy 1 as much anymore, because it does actually rely more on the motion controls than Super Mario Galaxy 2. So let's glide! And I'll just show you now. Here's how we glide. Keep it level and flat. There we go. It's ticked to say that it's flat. And then tilt to the left, we'll move us to the left, tilt to the right, we'll move us to the right, down to do a dive. Now, as you're going to see here, this is not a perfect solution. The motion controls are not as intuitive as a Wii remote, but it does mean that I can actually complete this level a lot easier. So perform the nose dive to get into there. Ooh, completely missed that. Still very, very finicky and not 100% perfect, but it works to get through these annoying levels and it works on the ball as well. And then to get the motion controls back off, back, overlay controls, motion controls, don't use device sensors, and we're just going to crash into the wall here. But now I can go back to just playing the game without the motion controls if I want to. And that's everything that you need to know to play Super Mario Galaxy 2 comfortably on Dolphin Android. All the controls set up, even all the settings and everything that makes it run nice and smooth. As you can see, we are dropping down to 50 frames per second at this point. Most of the time, the game does run roughly 50 to 60 frames per second. It is a Nintendo Wii game after all and not a GameCube game. And it is a lot more complicated to emulate. So you can see here, we're getting 60 frames per second. And then as we go into the much bigger areas of the level, it kind of drops down to 50 frames frames per second anyway. But if you found this information useful, then please hit that like button. It does help this channel grow. If you want more Dolphin emulator videos, then please, by all means, hit that subscribe button. You don't need to put notifications on. It's not really that much of a big deal. It would help, but like I understand that not a lot of my videos are for everybody. And I do go through various different aspects of emulation and various different devices. And maybe you just wanted to know about Dolphin emulation. You have no interest in iPad emulation or macbook emulation or pc emulation i completely understand that but a like at the bare minimum a like does help comments let me know down in the comments if you've got anything better if you've got a better control setup or if 
you use this control setup and it was successful. Or what other games you'd like to see controller setups for? I'm currently working on one for Skyward Sword and I'm working on one for all the classic N64 and Super Nintendo games that you can play on Dolphin as well. Uh, let me know if there's any systems you'd like me to look at as well. I have Windows, MacBook and iOS. So I'm going to be looking into all of them for Dolphin or maybe you just want a different emulator you want to emulate. You want to emulate your PS2 games? I have tutorials on that. I have I have tutorials on that. I have tutorials on how to do that on Xbox Series S and X as well. Um, anything else really? I don't really know what else to say. Uh, like I said, I'm just trying to push for as many subscribers and likes as possible because 99% of my viewers aren't subscribed to the channel and it would be nice if I could get a few more subscribers within the new year because I do really want this channel to grow in 2023. Oh, just trying to eat my apples and having a run and a mess around here. I'm rambling on once again. This is how most of my videos end. Nobody's here. The analytics have shown me that most people have turned off once they've got the information that, that they need. The second I say, that's it for this video, people switch off or find another video to watch. Or they go back and they try and get the setup working fine for themselves. So I'm just basically talking into the abyss here. So thanks once again if you're here. If you are here, leave the word sausage down in the comments. We'll see if there's any sausages in the comments. And take care. I hope this video finds you well. Um, have a great new year. Great 2023. 2023 is upon us. And I hope you have a fantastic year. And all your dreams come true. Bit shit that one, wasn't it? Don't do anything I wouldn't do. So let's take a look at setting up a controller configuration for The Legend of Zelda Skyward Sword. This is a game that I thought I would never get to play on Dolphin, never mind Dolphin Android, because it has one of the most complicated control schemes in the world thanks to the Motion Plus. But the wonderful developers at Dolphin have done a lot to support Motion Plus, and I am very happy with the outcome. But this has taken me a long time to figure out, and I think, I actually think I've got the best setup possible. I haven't completed the game with this controller configuration yet, because I've only just figured it out. Uh, but I have been playing it for a couple of hours now and everything seems to work and I'll show you that working now But let's just get in to actually setting it up So like I do with many of my Nintendo Wii games on Dolphin Emulator I set up a custom control scheme so I hold down on Skyward Sword and then I go to edit game settings The first thing you're going to want to do actually is to hold down and perform a system update And as you can see I've already done it so say the emulated Wii console is already up to date so this is just with newer games, it's just going to update it to the latest version of the Nintendo Wii home system so that the game will work. If you start the game without doing it, sometimes it's going to ask you to update the Wii console and that's how you do it. You go to the perform system update. So we go to edit game settings and I'll just show you a couple of my graphic settings that I use on mine. I'm using a Snapdragon 888 on a Xiaomi 11T Pro. I use the video backend of Vulkan. I use the shader compilation of hybrid Uber shaders. If we go to the enhancements, I... Keep it one times native because like I've said many times before, you're not going to be running Nintendo Wii games at 1080p on Dolphin Android unless you've got one of those fancy 1500 Risen machines, which I would love to take a look at one day. Go to the hack section, skip EFB access from CPU on, ignore format changes, that needs to be switched on as well. And then on the advanced section, I'm going to enable progressive scan, just because I prefer it that way. You don't need to have that one, that one's not as important as the others. So in the game settings menu, I'm going to go to Wii Import, Wii Remote, and then press Emulate it as always. And then for the extension, we're going to need the nunchuck, press the nunchuck, and it'll bring up the nunchuck options. For the C button, I use the L3 button because the C button is to look around in the game. It's to bring up the look around menu. The Z button, I set to L2 because that's the lock on and target. So when I hold L2, it's going to lock on or it's going to reset my camera. The stick is the control stick. So on the analog stick, I'm going to go up, down, left, right. Press them individually and go up, down, left and right on my analog stick. Swing, we don't need that on the nunchuck. Same with tilt, you don't need to tilt the nunchuck in the game, but we do need to shake the nunchuck because what shaking the nunchuck does is bring up our shield and it also performs the shield bash within the game. So I like to set that to L1. So X, Y, and Z all set to L1. So when I press L1, it's going to simulate shaking the, shaking the shield and it's going to bring up the shield. Now in the game, you can actually just 
shake the shield up once and it'll bring the shield up. It won't perform the shield bass, but we don't have that sort of intricacy here. And it does work out fine without it. If you do want a more intricate control scheme, then just buy the Nintendo Switch and the Nintendo Switch version. Then for the buttons, A, which is going to be dash, I set that to A. And B, I set that to R2 as always, because B is the back trigger on the Wiimote. So whenever I need to do that, I'll press the R2 button. One and two are used in this game, and they are for the help menu, and they're also for another menu that for your item pouches and things like that. So I set those to X and Y. So I set one to X, and I set two to Y. Start and select. I set to start and select. That's the plus and minus. Minus to select and plus to start. And the home button. You don't need the home button because the home button is the home button for the Nintendo Wii console. Now, this is where we're going to get into the intricacies of the motion emulation. So the IR receiver, like with Super Mario Galaxy and Super Mario Galaxy 2, I set that to the right analog stick with up, down, left, and right. And then forward and backward, we don't need. Swing is now going to simulate swinging the Wiimote controller in a certain direction, like you would with the sword in Legend of Zelda Skyward Sword. So what we need to do with this is we need to set this also to the right analog stick. Up, down, left, and right. And then forward is for the stabbing motion. So I set that to R3. So whenever I press R3, the Link will stab with his sword. Backwards, I haven't found any use for backwards right now. I haven't found any reason to swing my controller backwards in my first two hours of playing the game. So I keep that blank. Tilt. Now, tilt we use in the flying part of the game. You can use the device motion sensors like I do with Super Mario Galaxy, or you can use my little trick here that I use so that I can use the left analog stick whilst flying to move left and right. So left, I set to left on the left analog stick, and right, I set to right on the right analog stick. Now, as far as I'm aware, when I've been playing this, it hasn't had any effect on the movement whatsoever. Now, with forward and backwards, if we put them on the left analog stick, it's going to make Link do a slashing motion with his sword, and it is very annoying, because every time you go to move, he does a slash with his sword. It does work while you're flying, but it also has that added caveat of being every time that you move forward, you're going to be slashing your sword, and it can be very annoying. So what I do is I set forward to up on the D-pad, because up on the D-pad rarely has any effect within the game, and it it's kind of worked out perfect in that I don't really press up on the D-pad that much, just in a couple of menus, and I can do that with the left analog stick anyway a lot of the time. Backwards, however, I did set to down on the D-pad, but that also means that you come off your bird by pressing down on the D-pad. So what do we do for that? So for tilting backwards, which is to slow down your bird, I'm going to set that to right on the D-pad, because we rarely use that right on the D-pad as well. Shake is to simulate shaking and we need this to do spin attacks and we also need it for other things so shake i always set that to r1 like i do on super mario galaxy i set that to r1 so we've got two shakes r1 is r1 is wiimote shake l1 is nunchuck shake press the two together we do a spin attack and i'll show you how to do a couple of the attacks in a second when we get into the game d-pad always standard up down left and right on the d-pad this game like super mario galaxy 2 doesn't rely that much on the d-pad so it's actually kind of a win-win situation that we use it for multiple things and that is our controller setup so i'm just going to back out back out again and it's going to save the settings to soup01 which is the game code for skyward sword i'm going to get into the game and i'm going to show you a couple of the controls how they work how to play the game using these controls and how this is a great but not perfect control setup there is no perfect control setup if you have a perfect control setup please let me know down in the comments i have searched far and wide on the internet for this and uh this is the best i have come up with by mashing together a multiple amounts of different controls and i've been playing this game for at least four to five hours okay so as usual when we first play the game i've got the overlay controls on so i'm going to press back go to this lovely blue menu that i love so much Go to overlay controls, click toggle controls, and toggle all off. Beautiful. Right, so now we're going to go through some of the controls and teach you how to play this game, and teach you how to play this game using these controls. So the first thing is dash is set to A, and then if we want to do a roll, which Link does a lot, 
is we're going to want to press L1, which is the shake of the nunchuck, because shaking the nunchuck is the thing that you need to do physically with the motion controls to do a saucy little roll. Also, L1 is to bring up your shield and do the shield bash. So when someone comes at you, do the shield bash, press L1. And then to get rid of the shield, you can either put it away by pressing A, or you can swipe through your sword. You'll still have your shield out, but then you'll go into the attack formation. And we use the right analog stick to move and swing our sword. Lock on and change the camera. So if I face this way and press ZL, that's the lock on. If I want to lock on to any enemies that are around, I'll press that. To look around, I will press in L3 and that will bring up the look menu. Now, if I had motion controls active, I could use the motion controls to look around. Or if I'm very careful, now you have to be very careful with this and move around in smaller increments to move around. Because if we do just move up, it'll bring us out because it's swinging the Wiimote as well. So while this isn't, while this works, it isn't perfect. You have to be very careful when you're looking around. Because sometimes, like there, when I was moving between left and right, I get pulled out of it when I move to the left. So I have to be very careful and very precise when I do this, which means it's not going to be good for speedruns, but it's going to be able to get you through the game. And then to center, you press down on the D-pad. So let's get out of that. And as far as swinging the sword is concerned, as you can see, I press down, he strikes down, I press up, he strikes up, left, right, and then diagonal as well, which is one of the most beautiful things about this, is this game wants you to be a bit precise with your swipes. You can do that because it does simulate it almost perfectly. So it's definitely good for playing the game. And for spin attacks, you usually have to shake the Wiimote and the nunchuck together. So if we press L1 and R1, Link will do the, he'll do either a shield bash, or if you're, if you're quick enough, he will do a spinny, spinny spin. But that is only going one way. So to do the horizontal spin attack, you press L1 and swipe right or left at the same time. And as you can see, we're going right, left. Oh, you can even do that with up and down as well. Link is now exhausted. And that's pretty much most of the controls for Link. Let's go through the flying controls then. This is where I've probably earned your like here with these flying controls because previously I couldn't find a way to do this and now I have and I am very, very happy because the flying controls run almost perfectly, but it's definitely enough to play the game. So tilting left and right is the left analog stick, the right analog stick. Nose dive, press up on the D-pad and we nose dive. And then to pull up, we press right on the D-pad and he pulls up. And then we swing to flap and create altitude. And it is almost as smooth as the Nintendo Switch version that I have played recently as well. I say almost as smooth because even the Nintendo Switch version can be quite infuriating as well. This is actually mapped to the controls and it makes me so happy because I've been wanting to play this game for a long time. I've never finished this game because I've never been able to get this far without the use of motion controls. And I never had a motion plus for my Nintendo Wii until 2020 during the pandemic. That's when I got mine. Oh, I'm going to die. Ah, it's all right. It automatically does it anyway. And there we go. That is it. That is my controller configuration for Legend of Zelda Skyward Sword. Let me know down in the comments if this is useful for you. Because I know a lot of people, ever since I started doing Dolphin videos, people have been asking me, why don't you do Legend of Zelda Skyward Sword? Why don't you do Legend of Zelda Skyward Sword? And the answer has always been, I just can't find a control scheme that I am comfortable with and I'm comfortable sharing. Because I don't want to share a control scheme with people and then it not actually work well so i'm hoping that i'm going to be able to get through this game and 100 percent it as soon as possible i've got a couple more videos that i want to make on dolphin android and i'm going to be moving over to different versions of dolphin as well but in the interim while i'm doing those i'm going to be playing this game hopefully to 100 percent completion on dolphin and hopefully it's going to work so if you find this information useful leave a like please a like really does at the bare minimum a like helps this channel grow and i'm really hoping for this channel to grow in the future
So let's take a look at setting up our Wiimote with a classic controller. Now a classic controller was an attachment to the Nintendo Wiimote, which helps you play virtual console games and classic games like Super Mario 64, Ocarina of Time, Legend of Zelda A Link to the Past, and things like that. Now a lot of these games can be played with the GameCube controller as well, so if you've done the GameCube setup, then you don't really need to do this. But maybe the GameCube configuration isn't working for some reason, sometimes these things happen, and the classic controller is probably the, the second best way to go. So let's say we want to play a legend of zelda a link to the past so i'm going to hold down on that game go to edit game settings i'm going to start by going through a few graphic settings just to make sure change my video back end to vulcan because i like that one uh, and then i'm going to go to shader compilation make sure that's hybrid uber shaders and you're not really going to want to be messing around with a bunch of these but what i will do actually while i'm here is i'll go to enhancements and i'll switch it to three times native 1080p because this game isn't going to be that difficult to emulate I wouldn't use 1080p on Nintendo Wii games. I would use 1080p on some GameCube games. I just basically go on a frame by frame basis. So hold back down on Legend of Zelda Link to the Past, edit game settings, go to Wii Input, Wii Remote 1, emulated. Now it says extension, I'm gonna change that to the classic controller. And this will bring up the buttons for the classic controller. Now this setup depends on how you want to play your games. If you want to play with the classic Nintendo configuration, then A will be on B and B will be on A and Y will be X and X will be Y because Nintendo controllers have A here and B here. If you look at any Nintendo joypad in history, they've always had A where Microsoft puts the B button. It was only Microsoft and Sony that turned around and changed the A button or the most prominent button to be here. I actually think in Japan, Circle is still Enter on PlayStation and B is still Enter on Xbox in Japan. That's how ingrained it is in Japanese culture. I, however, do like to have the A button on A and the B button on B, but it does depend on, a ga on which game it is going to be. So if I press B, bind it to B. So it really does depend on the game, however I set this up. But if the game does have one of those on-screen controls where A is much better at this side, then I'll put it on this side. ZL and ZR, I use the back triggers for that. And then plus and minus is the classic start and select. We do not need the home button. Then the left stick is the left analog stick. So left stick up, left stick down, left stick left, left stick right. And then the right stick is the right analog stick. It's a very simple configuration left stick up down left and right and then the two triggers the left and right this is one thing that the classic controller has over the gamecube controller so l and r the two left triggers there and the d-pad up down left and right and that's it that is the most simple setup possible so far we go back we don't need any of this because we're not going to be using motion controls we're not going to be using any of the buttons usually when you plug the extension the classic controller extension they used to have the classic and the classic controller pro both of which i have at home and you just plug the classic controller in and you just let the wiimote dangle at the bottom this configuration also works on games like Mario Kart Wii, where you don't use motion controls, and I think it works on Kirby's Epic Yarn, because that can be played with a GameCube controller as well, and there's not any motion controls on that. So let's take a look at using cheats on Dolphin Emulator. We're going to be using Gecko codes and Action Replay codes, and we're going to be importing some of our own codes as well. So let's say, for example, we're using Super Mario Sunshine. As an example, if I hold on Super Mario Sunshine and press Edit Cheats, there are already a bunch of action replay codes already on the emulator. And there's a couple of gecko codes as well. Now, if I wanted more gecko codes, just to check to make sure if there's any more gecko codes for this game, I'd click download gecko codes. And it says file contains no codes. So there's no more gecko codes to download. And I'd have to input any new gecko codes or action replay codes myself. And then to turn on the cheats, I would just tick the ones that I want on before I play the game. And when I go back, it would save it and I'd be able to open the games. I'd have infinite health, infinite jetpacks. Some of these codes can break the game sometimes, so if you are having trouble, then I'd turn one of them off. I'd recommend using widescreen codes, and there are some 60 FPS codes that you can get from the internet and input yourself. And just to give you an example, if I go to a game that doesn't have any codes automatically installed, so if I go to Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time, click Edit Cheats, and then I click Download Gecko Codes, 163 codes have been added to this game, and I can now turn these off and on at will. But let's say there is a game code that isn't on the game that you want to play. For example, let's say we go to Super Mario Galaxy 2. I click Edit Cheats. I click Download Gecko Codes. And there's no codes available to download. I'm going to have to add all of these in myself. 
So what do we do? Well, first we go to an internet browser and we Google Super Mario Galaxy 2 Gecko Codes and find one of the sites that has all of the codes listed. Now, one thing you want to make sure of is that your game code matches the one that's at the top there. So we can see SB4E01. So if we go back into Dolphin Emulator, SB4E01. So let's go back to Google Chrome. Yep, they do match. So now we can start adding these codes. So let's choose one of these codes and I'll show you how to import it. So we'll go to Invincible to Enemies because that's a really simple one to show on screen. So if I click on that and we get need all of this code here, this number, and we go copy and we'll go back to Dolphin Emulator and add new Gecko code. So in the code section here, this is where we'll put the code. So I'll copy that in and then I'll put the name of it, Invincible. And create a note, so don't need to put any of that in. And there we go, that one's in. Go back. As you can see, I now have the invincible code on my gecko code. I'll turn that on, and then we'll go quickly into the game and see if it works. So we'll go into Boulder Bowl Galaxy. There's going to be lots of things that could potentially kill us here, and we have the invincibility cheat on, so in theory, we're not going to be able to die. Not from getting hit by enemies anyway. Lots of enemies to start this off. And let's test it out. That's it. Hit me in the face. Nope. Nothing. No hit marker. Absolutely nothing. He must be furious right now. And if you want to turn that off, we just go out of the game, go back to edit cheats, and turn it off. It's as simple as that. And the same works for action replay codes. Some games use action replay codes. Some games use gecko codes. Action replay codes are more on the GameCube side of things in GameCube games. So let's find a game that uses action replay codes. So let's go to Metal Gear Solid Twin Snakes. If we go to edit cheats, as you see there is already a lot of action replay codes in here. I haven't put these in here by the way. These were already these were already somehow in the emulator perhaps or maybe they are on the disc. But they are there are a lot here already. So first download gecko codes see I don't think there will be. Yep, there's no codes for that. But let's say I wanted to add my own code. If I go down here, I go to add new AR code and I do the same thing. I put the name of the code in here and then I'd copy and paste the code. I go to Google, type in Metal Gear Solid Twin Snakes action replay codes. Then I make some mistakes and Google will be like, did you mean this? And I'll be like, yeah. Now a great place to get action replay codes is either Almar's Guides or Code Junkies. Code Junkies US if you're using the US version of the game or Code Junkies UK if you're using the UK version of the game. And I'll leave links to these in the description down below. But if I go to Almar's Guides, which is one of my favorites, along with Code Junkies, I scroll down and there are some action replay codes for the US version with links to the UK version as well if that's what you're using. A lot of these I already have, but just to show you how it is, I'll go with, we'll go with FPS mode, which is something I've never actually used before. So this turns the game into an FPS shooter, I'm guessing. It says, don't leave on when entering cutscenes or doing story events. It can get buggy. So if we go copy, go to code, paste that code in, and we want FPS mode. Click OK, go back. And if we scroll, there's the new cheat, FPS mode, we'll turn that on. So we've got our new FPS mode on, and we're going to go into the game and check it out. But I'm just going to make sure, one thing, we're going to have the stealth suit on. And I'm going to give myself a bunch of other things as well, just to show you that these cheats work. I'm going to give myself infinite rations, infinite medicine, infinite bandages. Or oh, give myself a gas mask, night vision goggles, just, just everything that I need to complete the game without actually having to play the game. So let's start Metal Gear Solid, and we'll check out our new FPS code as well that we put in. So we're in the game, and I just press L2 and go into my inventory, and look, I already have the ketchup, I have the stealth, so I can breeze through this bit. I have the PSG, I have the M9. So let's... We're going to have to get through this section here, because if I go into FPS mode, then it won't do it just yet. So let's get into F. I keep pressing the wrong button. So let's get into FPS mode to check the cheat. I hold R1 and then I press up on the C stick, and that should stick it in first person mode. It really is a weird experience trying to play this game, especially considering there is no analog support. So it's basically like tank controls, but it is an interesting concept to just to see if the cheats actually work. Uh, 
how do I use my gun here? There we go. Uh, we cannot move and shoot. We are using tank controls like Resident Evil. It would be a great mod for someone to make to turn Metal Gear Solid into a first person shooter just to see from that perspective. But if you want to mess around with cheats, this video isn't about that. This video is basically about how to get the cheats running. And we have our cheats running. To get out of it, I press down on the C stick and get out of first person mode. And there we go. We're back in third person mode. The cheat is off. Beautiful. The cheats work. That's all, that's all that matters about this video. We're not going deep into this. I could play this game for hours on end, but that's not what I'm going to do. And that's pretty much it. That's all you need to really know about Gecko codes, action replay codes, and things like that. Gecko.org, the cheat set that used to hold all the Gecko codes, has been shut down. But there are some beautiful places on the internet. Everyone on the internet does like to preserve these things. There's a couple of Google sites that have been set up with all of the codes there, so you can find them. Also, Dolphin Emulator works quite well with most games that download it automatically. So, for example, Kirby's Epic Yarn, if I go into that, edit cheats, download Gecko codes. Ah, no codes, no dice, so I'm going to have to find them and automatically put them in as well. It is kind of annoying to be able to download these automatically and they just all appear on the game. Like, for example, I just went on Super Mario, New Super Mario Brothers and all the AR codes are in there. But there is no Gecko codes. For some reason, Zelda Ocarina of Time managed to work and do it. But, like I say, these, code, these, these websites get shut down and there are places still on the internet to find all of the codes. And you can manually input them yourself, which is why I made this video. So let's take a look at using texture packs on Dolphin Emulator. Now this can severely affect your performance. So if it is affecting your performance, then just take the texture packs out. It does depend on the system. You're going to need a high-end phone for this. I'm using a Snapdragon 888 on the Xiaomi 11T Pro. You're going to need a Windows PC to do this as well. So the first thing we need to do is we need to create a backup of our Dolphin data. Because Android, in its infinite wisdom and glory, has now changed to scoped storage, which means that you cannot get access and you cannot write to the data. In the old days, you should be able to write all of this. You should be able to just copy all of this over to the data file, and it would work lovely jubbly. But there are now a few loopholes. And luckily, the fantastic developers at Dolphin Emulator have figured out a way around this, and they've implemented it into the emulator itself. But I just want to say thank you to those guys for all their hard work so we hit the settings cog we go to config we go to user data and we just click export user data find a place on your phone that you want it to be so i'm just going to put it in this folder here the roms file click save and it's going to export a zip file for me to use on my computer and then i move over to my computer i plug my phone in and i give it access to my phone so let's leave Dolphin Emulator and let's plug my phone into my computer and then click File Transfer. Once on my computer, I'm going to click into my phone, go to the ROMs file. I'm going to find this dolphin.emu.zip and I'm going to copy that to my computer. I'm just going to pop that on my desktop. So if you click the link in the description down below for our texture packs, it'll bring you to this forum. And this forum is the place where all of the Dolphin texture packs are being collated at this moment in time. It is a fantastic resource. There are a lot of hardworking people getting these texture packs out, doing fantastic work. So I'm just going to search for the game that I'm going to use as an example here. So I'm going to use Super Mario Sunshine because there is a lovely painted texture pack that I like to use. And it also shows that the texture packs do affect the game as well. So I'm going to type in Super Mario Sunshine Painted. So that's, the, that's the edition that I want, Painted Edition. Click Go. It's going to search through the entire forum. And then Super Mario Sunshine Painted Edition. And it brings me to this bit here, which has the links to download it. So there's a link to a Google Drive. I'm going to click on that. Now, always be careful when you're downloading things. I've never had any issues with um, this website so far. But you do this at your own risk. I have to say that just in case. I'm going to right click that and click download. It's going to download my texture pack. If you go back to the forum, you can find a bunch of other games as well. You can click through or you can just search the name of the game plus the word texture and you'll probably find a texture pack there. And see there's texture packs for Super Mario Galaxy 2, Metal Gear Solid Twin Snakes, all the Legend of Zelda, Ocarina of Time, Majora's Mask and the Collector's Edition stuff as well. Wind Waker, some fantastic work by some fantastic people. I really do appreciate all of the work that they put into these texture packs. So once you've got your file for your HD texture packs, you're going to want to extract it all. So right click, 
click extract all and then extract and what we want is this folder here that has GMS as the label that is the game code and you're going to want to make sure that the game code matches the game code in the game so if we go back to Dolphin emulator on our phone and we scroll down we find Super Mario Sunshine right click and we click details and you can see it's GMS E01 GMS will work fine the first three digits here or if you want to be super sure you can add E01 to the end of that Okay, so now we need to get this GMS file into our dolphin-emu.zip So we'll extract all of this click extract all click extract Once that's extracted you can see we have this dolphin-emu folder here. We can delete this And then we just Open a new open dolphin dash emu in a new window. Let's put them side by side. Go to load, go to textures in dolphin dash emu, and then just drag the GMS into it and copy them over. So, what we need to do is we need to get this back into a compressed zip format. So, if we double click dolphin dash emu and then we select everything here, a right click and click compress to zip file, and that's going to compress it all into a nice little zip folder for us. So that we can then put it back on our phone and import it back into Dolphin. Okay, and then we just need to name our zip file dolphin-emu. And copy it over to our Android phone. So I'll bring them up side by side. Go to internal storage. To my ROMs folder. Delete the current version of dolphin-emu.zip on my phone. And then just copy the new one over. Once that's complete, we're going to move back to our Android phone. Open Dolphin. Go to the settings cog, go to config, go to user data and click import user data. Find the dolphin-emu.zip. It says, are you sure you want to place your user data with the data in this file? Yep. I'm going to import that. And this might take some time as well because we are importing 1.1 gigabytes of texture files. And there we go. The user data has been imported. Didn't take as long as I thought it would. And now we just want to make sure that we're going to be loading our custom textures in. So if I go to the settings cog, go to graphic settings, scroll down, go to advanced and where it says load custom texture mods, that is ticked. And I also tick prefetch custom textures. So that's before the game, it puts the textures into the system RAM. If you're having problems with stuttering and things like that, then you're going to want to turn this off. But if you have a high end device, then you're not going to be have that much of a problem. So let's take a look at these texture mods. We'll go to Super Mario Sunshine. And you can see in the top left corner, it says custom textures loaded to 2,943.1 megabyte has been loaded in. And Super Mario Sunshine Painted Edition is now here. And as you see, Mario has this lovely painted look to him. And a lot of the boxes and the text and things like that have been changed. Now, this might not be your cup of tea as far as texture mods are concerned. There are some that just do HD versions of the original textures. But I, I kind of like this one because it is a bit of fun. What Nintendo and their inability to skip cutscenes? Trying to make a video! Well, there we have it. Super Mario is all painted up. All the textures look nice and saucy. If you've played this game a lot, you will notice a lot of a difference within the textures. You can go to settings, graphic settings, and then let's go to enhancements and internal resolution. Let's try that at 720p. I know it runs at like 24 frames per second. Oh, 30 frames per second, 1080, 720p. It's kind of a little bit HD here, but Mario does look crisp. And so do all the sprites and things like that. So that's everything you need to know to get custom textures up and running on Dolphin Emulator on Android. And that is everything you need to know about Dolphin on Android. If you're still watching, then thank you so much for taking the time to watch the video. Please hit the like button if this video was useful. Consider subscribing to the channel. If there are any questions about Dolphin, then let me know down in the comments. Type the word sausage into the comments. I appreciate every one of you. And as always, don't do anything I wouldn't do.